Jesus spoke to the crowds. I tell you solemnly, of all the children born of women, a greater than John the Baptist has never been seen. Yet, the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he is. Since John the Baptist came up to this present time, the kingdom of heaven has been subjected to violence, and the violent are taking it by storm. Because it was towards John that all the prophecies of the prophets and of the law were leading. And he, if you will believe me, is the Elijah who was to return. If anyone has ears to hear, let him listen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. The Word of God is teaching us that the kingdom of heaven has been subjected to violence and the violent are taking it by storm. Luke chapter 16, verse 16, the same scripture. This is now we have read from the Gospel of Matthew and the same thing is repeated in the Gospel of Luke chapter 16, verse 16. Let's repeat this word of God together. The law and the prophets were in effect until John came. Since then, the good news of the kingdom of God is proclaimed. And, and everyone, everyone tries, tries to, to enter, enter it by force. force. That means, if we have to enter the kingdom of God, we need to use violence. We need to enter it by force. It's when I read in an interpretation of this scripture that I came to know, this violence, this force that we should use not to anybody else, but to ourselves. This is called, this is what the spiritual fathers call it, spiritual warfare that means we are all in a warfare unfortunately we don't see the enemy because satan is invisible and we should know he is the second most powerful because he is a fallen angel after god so if we don't know what are his deceptions we'll also be into trouble that's why we need to prepare ourselves for a spiritual battle and this battle is a daily battle, it's a daily struggle to fight against the wiles of the devil. That's why St. Paul clearly said this is Ephesians chapter 6 from 12 we read. St. Paul is teaching us that we need to put up the whole armor of God. Why? Because for our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. These are the spiritual forces of evil where we can never see the evil one with our naked eye. That's why we should know the tricks and the deceptions of the evil one. Again, St. Paul, St. Peter is teaching 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8. 1 Peter 5, 8, St. Paul is teaching, 1 Peter 5, 8, chapter 5, verse 8. Discipline yourselves, keep alert, like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. See, every day after the Holy Mass, we pray the prayer to St. Michael. And what, what is the content of this prayer? Uh, cast into hell, Satan who prowls around to devour us. That means we should agree this is a reality that Satan is a being and he is not just an idea or something that is an absence. He is a being and he is the one behind many things. And I'm just going to explain seven ways that devil is trying to destroy us and deceive us once again. And we have already seen previously through the word of God how he is going to deceive us. And now this is also another way to know how to overcome this spiritual battle. This is to prepare ourselves for a spiritual warfare. The first method that devil uses to, dist to distract us, to keep us away from God is discouragement. That he will always put us down, reminding us of past sins. He will remind us the guilt. That's the way he will bind us. 
then immediately you feel, no, you are not worthy. You cannot do it. You have done something in the past. See, this is the way the devil tried to accuse Moses, making him incapable, uh, telling him you are a murderer. You are not good. You cannot go back to that country. Discouraging. That's why we read what does and to how to overcome the deceptions to know what God says. The devil says exactly opposite to what God says. If God is love, Satan is hatred. And that's the way he works. So what does God say? Is he discouraging us or is he encouraging us? Let's read. This is Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. The, the Lord is telling, Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The Lord is promising that we should not remember the former things. Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. Do not remember. Let's repeat this word of God together. Do not remember the former things. Or oh, consider the things of old. Verse 19. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Now, if somebody is reminding you of the things that is happened some years back, maybe an abortion, maybe a murder, maybe a kind of a divorce or separation, maybe some failures, maybe some kind of sins that happened. But sisters and brothers, it's the devil who will discourage you, who will say you are not worthy. Remember Though Moses was a murderer, God still chose him. Though David committed adultery, idolatry, and even murder, God did not cast him off. But what does the devil say? You are good for nothing because you have already failed. You are a failed person. So we should look at God who does new things. Again, this is now in the book of Revelation, chapter 21, 5 and 6. Revelation 21, 5 and 6. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. And he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. The Lord is telling You don't want to be afraid or discouraged about the things that happened in the past. I'm doing something new. Put your trust in me. Again, this is Ezekiel chapter 32, 13 and 14. Ezekiel 32, 13 and 14. The Lord is reminding us, I will destroy all its livestock from beside abundant waters. And no human food shall trouble them anymore. Nor shall the hoofs of cattle trouble them. Then I will make their waters clear and cause their streams to run like oil, says the Lord God. That means when your life is flowing, there will be events that devil will remind you, events of the past. Maybe a failed relationship of the past. Maybe a broken relationship. Maybe something had fallen into. Maybe a sexual sin. And the Lord is telling, when you come to me, I will remove all these things. Then I will make their waters clear. I will make sure your mind is getting once again clear and you will be able to follow me. Again, this is now Ezekiel 28, 24. Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 24. The Lord is telling us, The house of Israel, together with me, the house of Israel shall no longer find a pricking briar or a piercing thorn among all their neighbors, who have treated them with contempt. And they shall know that I am the Lord God. Remember what does God does. He is helping you to get rid of the pricking words uttered by. Maybe your own life partner, your neighbor, your parents, your grandparents, your teachers. Anything that has hurt you. Those who treated you with contempt. What does the Lord is telling? He is letting you to come out of it. That's why we have a, a song that goes, letting go, letting go. Lord, I surrender and I let everything that of my past go. But the devil, in his deception, he will keep on reminding you, you're not worthy. 
I know your background. I know your history. I know from where you are coming. You cannot achieve it. You, God cannot forgive you. See, this is a deception. Because God, the book of the Bible is all about forgiveness of God. Isaiah 55, 7 we read. What is the character and the nature of the Lord? Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. What does the devil will say? God will not forgive you. You, you, you cannot have a future because you have committed such huge crimes. Sisters and brothers, prodigal son destroyed everything. God forgave him. The adulterous woman committed adultery. God forgave her. The Samaritan woman had five husbands and even still she was living with a sixth one. God forgave her. David was a murderer. God forgave him. Abraham was a liar. God forgave him. Jacob was a cheater, deceiver. He deceived his own brother. God forgave him. Then what about you? But the devil will repeatedly put inside your heart, God cannot forgive you. You cannot come back to your life because you have failed God. The scripture says, Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31. But those who trust in the Lord, what will happen? Those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Sisters and brothers, remember the Lord he is a forgiving God. So he will never discourage you. So one of the deceptions of the evil one is that he will continue to remind you of the past sins. Isaiah 43, 25, the Lord said, I, I, I am he. You can repeat with me. I, I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake. And I will not remember your sins. Jeremiah 31, 34. These are the things the Lord said. Satan will say just the opposite. The Egyptians, uh, I, I, Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 34. Jeremiah 31, 34. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord. For they shall know me. From the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive the iniquity and remember their sin no more. Do you want to believe what the devil says or what your God says? He is telling, I will never remember your sins anymore and I will forgive your iniquity. If anybody is discouraged, feeling, no, I cannot have another chance because I have committed terrible sins. I have been into repeated adultery, alcoholism, watching filthy things, into gambling. I don't think there is a point of return. This is devil's discouragement. Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 8. These are all God's word. So you have to put your, fill your heart and mind with what your creator says. I will cleanse them from all the guilt of their sin against me. And I will forgive all the guilt of their sin and rebellion against me. Even me as I preach, I know I was forgiven and I am forgiven. Every day I ask for forgiveness. So if God treats me about the things I have done in the past, if I am keep on pondering about my failures, I cannot be God's servant. Zechariah chapter 10 verse 6. Not what's God's character. He not just forgives you, but he treats you as if you have never failed him. Let's repeat this word of God. I will strengthen the house of Judah and I will save the house of Joseph. I will bring them back because I have compassion on them. And they shall be as though I had not rejected them. For I am the Lord their God. And I will answer them. I have compassion on them. And they shall be as though I had not rejected them. I do remember after one of the youth retreats a girl came and she said. Father I desire to be a nun. But my problem is I have already messed up my life. I did so many terrible sins in my life. So I don't think I am worthy. 
what is your opinion what do you say will god accept me i said of course because god never calls people who are qualified he calls them and qualifies them it's not look at those whom god chose are they perfect people your sins your failures your terrible background is not a problem actually that is the qualification for god to call you because he always calls like matthew who was he tax collector outcast the one who was rejected by the society who was samaritan woman whom he called to be his servant his apostle look at all those whom he chose they were not perfect people jacob is least worthy to be called as god of and god himself is called god of jacob who was he his name itself symbolizes a cheater a deceiver so don't look at your past your past makes you to rely totally upon your god this is what book of job chapter 22 verse 30 because he heals you you the guilty he will deliver even those who are guilty they will escape because of the cleanness of your hands it's god's sanctity that qualifies you it's god's holiness that qualifies you not your own merit so when you are a sinner when you are failed you don't rely on yourself sisters and brothers one of the things that devil uses to discourage to put you into trouble is discouragement reminding you about your inadequacy your fail your failures and what has happened in the past god never looks into that maybe there are some i know they are not uh, confident to enter into my marital life because they are holding on to brooding on their past there are some they are, they are not able to take a decision in their life because they are keep on holding on to their past our god is a forgiving god whatever happens he does something new and he, the scripture says to corinthians 5:17 those who are in christ jesus they are a new creation world has passed away see everything has become new this is the goodness the greatness and the beauty of our god and our faith in him everything old he removes as if he makes it in a clean slate i do remember uh, i immediately after my uh, ordination i was hearing confession so after this confession i had a vision that i could see a slate so when this person was confessing i could see that a hand is coming and writing all those sins in the in this black board and when i gave absolution in the name of the father and of the son and the holy spirit your sins are forgiven i could see that same hand is coming and removing from the clean the slate making it clean as if no sin is visible even nobody can remember even i can't remember even he can't remember and he said that day the moment a person confesses i clean his life as i clean a slate nothing is remembered even by the almighty god then how much more that's why romans 8 1 we read those who are in christ jesus there is no condemnation at all there is therefore no condemnation sisters and brothers put this into your heart there is hope because we have a god who never discourage you who will never disappoint you who will never accuse you who will never question your integrity of your past is a god of the present that's why our god's name is is the god of the present not of the past he never treats you in accordance with your past this is psalm 103 verse from 10 psalm 103 verses from 10 he does not together with me he does not deal with us in accordance with our sins no repay us according to our iniquities see the deception of the devil he will always tell you you are not worthy because you have sinned and god will deal with you in accordance with your sin now this particular calamity has come because you have done something similar in the past the lord is repaying evil for evil let the devil is deceiving you god will never repay you in accordance with iniquity this is word of god put this truth inside you everything that the devil says is a lie he what does he say god cannot forgive you that's why many are living in the shame of guilt in the shame of their 
past sins but god never treats you even we all have even me i have a stinking past but god forgive me god has crossed that chapter that's why i stand here as a priest then the second area where devil is deceiving us he will cause doubt in us he will cause doubt what is the doubt that he is causing he will let us to think that god is these doubts that he is putting that he will put doubts that he is not with us the first thing he caused doubt in his presence that he is not present with us but we read this is joshua 1:9 what did god told joshua after choosing him let's repeat this word of god joshua 1:9 I hereby command you be strong and courageous do not be frightened or dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go repeat that word of God the Lord your God is with you wherever you go three times the Lord your God is with you wherever you go see the lord said i will be there wherever you go again we read now this is joshua chapter 1 verse 5 let's read chapter 1 verse 5 he said no one shall be able to stand against you all the days of your life as i was with moses and i will be with you and i will not fail you or forsake you what does the devil say he will cause doubt no god is not with you he has abandoned you has forgotten you but the lord is telling i will be with you and i will not fail you or forsake you remember the word of god is addressed to you and to me this is not just to joshua again let us read now this is deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 8 there are five doubts that devil is creating doubt one is about god's presence second one is god about god's promises the third one is about god's plan the fourth one is about god's power and the fifth one is about god's provisions the first one is what i am telling is god's presence devil is causing doubt in us that god is not present he is not with you he has abandoned you but the scripture says it is the lord who goes before you he will be with you he will not fail you or forsake you do not fear or be dismayed and we know god is faithful in his words in his promises so he is present again now this is uh, in the book of judges this is chapter 18 verses 5 and 6 even on your journey on your mission when you travel to a foreign country when you travel to a new place then they said to him enquire of god that we may know whether the mission we are undertaking will succeed the priest replied go in peace the mission you are on is under the eye of the lord but the devil will simply say no this is a failed project you cannot make this journey god will not travel with you sisters and brothers he will go wherever you go again this is book of esra this is chapter 8 was 21 this is about a journey where god himself is taking care then i proclaimed a fast there at the river ahas ahawa that we might deny ourselves before our god to seek from him a safe journey for ourselves our children and all our possessions sisters and brothers this prophet esra is inviting people to make sure god is with them on their journey it is god's presence is really true and is available again isaiah 43:1 and 2 is not just when you are in safety he is present now thus says the lord he who created you jacob he who formed you o israel do not fear for i have redeemed you I have called you by my name you are mine when you pass through the waters I will be with you and through the rivers they shall not overwhelm you when you walk through fire you shall not be burned 
and the flame shall not consume you remember god's presence is felt not only in your good things in your happy days when everything is fine even when you walk through the waters even when you are crossing the rivers even when you are in fire see the meshak shadra kan abad nego they were thrown into the furnace of fire see god's presence was in the midst of them so devil will tell you no god is absent that's why you should know god's presence is so sure and he is there with you always hosea 11:4 hosea chapter 11 verse 4 we read i led them with the cords of human kindness with the bands of love i was to them like those who lift infants to their cheeks and i bent down to them feed and fed them he was always even when you are a child until now devil will say god is not present he is absent the first thing god is present and god re- r- proves it then promises god's promises devil will cause doubt on his promises but we read in psalm 12 6 psalm chapter 12 verse 6 his promises are true and he is faithful in his promises he never fail in his promises let's read together the promises of the lord are promises that are pure silver refined in a furnace on the ground purified seven times if he has promised you a marital life he was with you on the day that you have taken the marriage vows he is with you forever he will never abandon you sister hazel one day revealed to me one testimony she became a widow when she was 28 years and one day after many years after she lost her husband one day she found somebody is just tapping her feet when she got up she could not find anyone it was early morning maybe around 5 am and then she said she did not understand but she felt some kind of presence of god then she was hearing a voice check the importance of this date so when she checked on the calendar this was the same day she got married 25 years back then she immediately remembered but i'm a widow i don't have a husband then how does it matters for me if it is 25 years or 30 years or 50 years then the lord said my daughter on the day of your wedding i was present it was not you were not just married to your husband but to me too i was a witness i am in the center of your marriage isaiah 545 the lord is telling this is consoling for all the widows for your maker is your husband the lord of hosts is his name the holy one of israel is your redeemer the god of the whole earth he is called he is a husband to every married woman he is a provider because he keeps his promise he is not like a human he he was there with you and he said he will be with you forever till the end of time and that's why devil is a deceiver he will promise you in your trouble he is not there but even when her husband is dead jesus is all around he is all around he he has not forgotten then again to remember god's promise 1 kings chapter 8 verse 56 1 kings chapter 8 verse 56 god is faithful in his promises blessed be the lord who has given rest to his people israel according to all that he promised not one word has failed of all his good promise which he has spoken through his servant moses sisters and brothers while even while i was in the seminary whenever we are in a crisis we go because seminary formation takes 11 years in between we have a crisis we don't know whether we will be make it become a priest so whenever we go for a retreat we go for counseling for prayers they will say god will make you a priest it's his promise but we have this doubt and today i know this doubt is caused by the devil anyone who is doubting about god's plan for you god's promises for you once he promised he will fulfill joshua 21:45 
the scripture says this is towards the end of Joshua's chapter because they started from Egypt from nowhere and the Lord promised him that I will take you to the promised land but along the way they were going through a lot of crises but towards the end Joshua is declaring not one of all the good promises that the Lord had made to the house of Israel had failed all came to pass all came to pass sisters and brothers it is because we are surrounded by human beings who makes empty promises we doubt god's promises and this is the deception of the devil if he made you a promise he will fulfill this promise 2 corinthians chapter 1 verse 20 we read because god is always yes for in him every one of god's promises is a yes for this reason, it is through him that we say the Amen to the glory of God. Every promise that God made is an Amen. Again, Tobit chapter 14 verse 4. Tobit chapter 14 verse 4 we read. It is about uh, the same thing that everything that the Lord has promised through the prophets that it has taken place none of all their words will fail but all will come true none of all the promises that the prophets made will come true this is what god is telling us it is about the promises again then god creates doubt about his plan means uh, devil causes doubt about god's plan he will just say god has no plan we read in Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. This is one of the most important and the most quoted scripture. Why? Because people always feel, no, God has no plan for me. No, I, I don't have an aim in my life. I don't know the purpose of my life. And the scripture is telling, for surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for your welfare and not for harm to give you a future with hope. But the devil will repeatedly tell you no god has no plan for you but the scripture says he has a plan for you he has a purpose psalm 57 verse 2 psalm 57 verse 2 he he does not just make a plan he will help you to fulfill it i cried to god most high to god who fulfills his purpose for me again proverbs chapter 23 verse 18 Proverbs chapter 23 verse 18. Surely there's a future for your hope will not cut off. Again, Isaiah 25 1. Isaiah 25 1. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name for you have done wonderful things. Plans formed of old, faithful and sure. Plans formed of old. Even before you were born, God made a plan. So if the devil says, no, there is no plan for you, plan about you from God, it's a deception. God has a plan about your life, about your children, about your children's children, about your workplace, about your job, about your studies, about your future, about your transfer, about your future destination, about your visa, your PR, your citizenship. He has a plan. He has. But the devil will discourage you. will say, no, God has no plan. So we need to remember and believe in the plan of God. Then the other deception that the devil makes is to doubt in his, about his power. God's power. We read in Jeremiah 30 to 27. Is God's power limited? See, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is anything too hard for me? Is there anybody who is doubting the power of God? Let's also read now. This is Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 14. Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 14. To remember God's power. Although heaven and the heavens of heavens belong to the Lord your God. The earth with all that is in it. Everything belongs to him. Again this is Numbers chapter 11 21 onwards. 21 to 23 is a very important scripture. Numbers 11 from 21. Moses said, The people I am with number 600,000 on foot. And you say, I will give them meat that 
they may eat for a whole month we continue are there enough flocks and herds to slaughter for them are there enough fish in the sea to catch for them the lord said to moses repeat this word of god together with me is the lord's power limited now you shall see whether my word will come true for you or not is god's power limited as you listen to me do you think the power of the lord is limited that the corona virus is still on making some kind of trouble his power is not limited maybe a jobless don't remember don't think that god's power is limited his power is unlimited again jeremiah 32:17 jeremiah 32:17 we read o oh, the lord god it is you who made the heavens and the earth by your great power and by your outstretched arm nothing is too hard for you nothing is too hard basically our problem we consider god as another human being that's why god said jesus said using his mouth his tongue mark 10:27 for mortals it is impossible but not for god for god all things are possible sisters and brothers if you repeat this we have heard of god repeatedly you will get out of hopelessness you will get out of a kind of uh, despair you will get out of depression because you have a god for him for his power is unlimited job chapter 42 verse 2 job 42 2 the scripture says i know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted if there is someone who can do all things is god and for us is impossible that's why we need to believe in the power of god unlimited power of god job chapter 5 verse 9 also we read job 5 9 he does great things and unsearchable marvelous things without number believe in his power again then devil causes doubts in god's provisions god's provisions genesis chapter 22 verse 14 the name of the lord is revealed here like jehova jaira that means the one who provides so abraham called that place the lord will provide as it is said to this day on the mount of the lord it shall be provided see whatever you have in your life today is basically is not your achievement your achievements are very little we read in the book of job chapter 24 verse 13 the lord has categorically revealed to the people of israel there are those who rebel uh, sorry joshua 2413 joshua 2413 joshua 2413 i gave you a land on which you had not labored and towns that you had not built and you live in them you eat the fruit of vineyards and olive yards that you did not plant you did not plant sisters and brothers then how can we say god did not provide again in the book of john this is chapter 4 verse 38 when he was sending the apostles to to take the harvest he is telling i send you to reap for that which you did not labor others have labored and you have entered into their labor maybe you are in a company you are in a workplace you are in a new apostolate remember it's someone's hard work is what you are reaping that means how much god is providing for us his provisions are so much he is always providing for his people again this is deuteronomy chapter 6 from 10 we read deuteronomy 6 from 10 about god's provisions when the lord your god has brought you into the land that he sought your ancestors to abraham to isaac and to jacob to give you a land with fine large cities that you did not build let devil does not deceive you saying god is not a provider then the other deception that the devil causes is division he causes division among the people and we should know the power of unity we read in romans chapter 12 verse 5 he will cause division how he will just tell that you know that he the thing that he is making that the satan's goal in the marriage 
if you are married to get you think that your spouse is your enemy not the devil he will just put inside you if you have a wife your wife will think as a husband you are the enemy the husband will think the wife is your enemy this is the the deception of the evil uh, that he will cause division it is his, his strategy so we who are many are one body in christ and individually we are members of one another we cannot live separate we are called to live in a community in a society that means but the devil will repeatedly say that you have to break up you cannot just go on in this way this person is strictly against you and he is causing division again the same chapter verse 10 we read verse 10 12 10 the lord is teaching us love one another with mutual affection outdo one another in showing honor then verse 16 the same chapter verse 16 live in harmony with one another do not be haughty but associate with the lowly do not claim to be wiser than you are see in a marital life wherever you are in a company in workplace where there is no unity it will break up so devil is the one behind causing division he will divide your ideas your relationship and he will just cause you to think that this person this neighbor is your enemy but actually devil is the enemy but he will just put inside you your husband is your permanent enemy your wife is your enemy that means you cannot love each other there will be lot of misunderstanding lot of uneasiness among one another that's why hebrews chapter 10 was 24 hebrews chapter 10 was 24 we read hebrews 10 24 is the importance of love so let us consider how to provoke let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds this is the way we can build up harmony and unity then the other area where the devil deceive the people is causing discontentment discontentment dissatisfaction hebrews chapter 13 verse 5 Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5 we read Hebrews 13 5 keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have for he has said i will never leave you or forsake you sisters and brothers this is the area where devil is causing lot of problems in people's life what is how this discontentment uh, take place that means devil causes you to compare your life with others your marriage with the marriage of somebody your family with the family of others your financial situation with the fa- financial situation of the other your career with the career of others your possessions with the possessions of others your education with the education of others your performance with the performance of others your talents with the talents of others and and devil will cause you a kind of discontentment uh, reminding you you are not adequate you are not equal to someone you are not uh, good enough and that's the way devil will cause these kinds of trouble that's why saint paul is teaching this is philippians chapter 4 verse 11 why he is treated to be such a an important apostle he said not that i am referring to being in need for i have learned to be content with whatever i have how do you know you are spiritually growing you are coming close to god you will be content with what you are you will not compare you will not be in competition you will not be in quarrel you are who you are that is why we have a beautiful song that goes i know who i am i know who i am this is what god made us unique so devil will cause you you are inadequate you are not good enough and proverbs chapter 30 verse 8 we read proverbs chapter 30 verse 8 proverbs 38 remove far from me falsehood and lying give me neither poverty nor riches feed me with the food that i need this is contentment sisters and brothers and the devil is a deceiver he will cause discontentment then the other area where devil causes harm is distractions 
about the things that you exactly need to focus distractions he will tell you to focus on people of this world you will be in trouble if you look at anyone if you model your life on anybody else we read in hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 let's keep our eyes fixed on jesus the only perfecter and the pioneer of your faith 1 peter 221 we read let us therefore learn the example from jesus then again ephesians chapter 5 verse 1 we read let us therefore be imitators of christ psalm 119 verse 15 psalm 119 verse 15 let's repeat this word of god together i will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways if you are fixing your eyes on the way of any human person, even on your parents, even on your siblings, even on any celebrities, you will be falling down within no time. Fix your eyes on the way of God. But the devil will tell you, you have to become like this person. You have to preach like this person. You have to sing like this person. You have to dance like this person. And you will be into trouble. The Lord wants you to fix your eyes on his way. That's the way you will be feeling contented and you will not be distracted by what others are doing and also increasing multiplying activities you will be distracted the devil will tell you do so many things then what will happen you will not have time for god he will multiply activities in I ask you to do so many jobs and you have no time for God. You'll have time for everyone. He will, you will have time for your friends. You'll have time for parties. You'll have time for functions. But you'll not have time for God. Distraction. Devil will tell you. No. This is, he will cause unimportant things as important things. Important things as unimportant. This is the deception of the devil. Are you distracted in this way? The Lord wants you to return to him. Then deception. He will deceive you. I have already told you, this is Isaiah chapter 5 verse 20. How he will deceive you? He will call good as evil. You who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter, sisters and brothers, this is the deception of the evil one. He will cause good things as evil, evil things as good. You know, we have so many sins like same-sex marriage. The devil has just inserted that it is all right. But marriage is between a man and a woman. But devil is a deceiver. In the same way, alcoholism, drug abuse, gambling, abortion, divorce, separation. There are many, many sins. Even occult, witchcraft, black magic, new age movements. Just putting it as good. It's okay. It's normal. It's a human right. I need happiness. Sisters and brothers, this seeking of external happiness is destroying us. It's a devil's deception. Then this is distraction. John 10.10. 10. The ultimate uh, purpose of the devil is our distraction. The thief, the devil comes to steal, kill and destroy. Sisters and brothers, I was just explaining to you that devil is a deceiver. We should know in our spiritual warfare how devil is deceiving us. The first thing, he caused discouragement. Then he caused division. Then he caused doubt. Then he caused discontentment. Then he caused distractions. Then he caused a kind of deception. Then ultimately he will destroy us. And he will cause doubt. I have told you about God's promises God's presence, God's plan, God's power, and God's provisions. And when we look at the word of God to see exactly what God does, we'll be able to overcome all these deceptions of the evil one and we'll be equipped for a spiritual warfare.